Beeindrucken tut sie mit ihren Tellern, mit ihrer Raffinesse, mit ihrer Eleganz und mit ihrer Art zu arbeiten. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, begrüßen Sie Karim Lopez und Ihr Team. Welcome on stage. Thank you. How are you feeling? Excited to be here. I really want to help uh, to thank Chef Alps uh, for the warm welcome. And also, I kindly ask you uh, another applause for my team that is here with me today. So, thank you. <laughs> Matia and Bruno. Mexico, that's where you come from. Yeah. And an amazing journey with places all over the world in the best kitchens. I mean, where else than with Massimo Bottura you can end up? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a funny story how I ended up there, but... Yeah, I um, just told it. But yeah, I'm there now. <laughs> Gucci, a big name. Florence, yeah. full of culture, of art. I mean, this is what Massimo loves. Uh, what about the pressure? of having the name it's Gucci and Massimo Bottura in the name of the restaurant? It's a lot. They, um, actually, we're talking about on this presentation about that, uh, the expectation that the people has mm -hmm. uh, linking the names of Gucci and Massimo Bottura. You must, you have like popping out um, one dish or what you heard of or maybe one image. But we want to bring away the people from that expectation and create new memories. So, of course, we have to work hard to do this because um, it's a completely new idea. But let's see what happens. We are working hard to, on doing this. And You're a half a year now on the way? Yes. More or less? Huh? Yes. In a wonderful place right uh, opposite of uh, the Plaza Vecchio. Huh? Yeah. Right yeah. In, the, in the center of, uh, of, of... Piazza della Signoria. Exactamente. Yes. Uh, so this place is, is lovely. Yeah, it's Wonderful. amazing. It's a long time ago, this place used to be a melting pot of cultures where everyone mm -hmm. uh, wants to trade their goods, uh, their materials. And a lot of people from all over the world came there to exchange this. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing the same in this kitchen because we have a team of multicultural people and we bring this to the table okay so i'm looking forward to seeing what you're preparing for us two dishes today yeah. the stage is yours thank you thank Karim you Lopez. thank you so thank you for being here everybody um i'm will talk about a, a little bit of what we're doing in florence and about the expectation, the memory, and the surprise we want to, to create in this new concept. So we all have food memories, uh, some good, some bad. The taste, the smell, and the texture of food can bring us to another place, to a memory maybe from childhood where the mother was cooking, the grandmother. Um, so the food is uh, an effective trigger uh, of deeper memories of feelings and emotions and internal state of mind because it's one of the very first experience that we have in life. We start first learn eating than to walk or to talk. So it's the very, very first experience we have. And that's where we link in our hearts and in our belly, so many experiences. So this is why maybe we can recreate um, the dish that our grandmother used to do in her house. Because we cannot have maybe the same people in that, that were in that time, or maybe that feeling of being all the people together. So I will put you a clear example that will bring you uh, to this experience. Maybe, like, uh, for example, Mattia, that it's Italian, can tell me uh, the story of his life around a pasta dish, because he grew up like that. So I'm working in Italy, and I can hear, like, a lot of stories about, oh, the lasagna of my grandmother, or the pasta al pomodoro of my aunt, 
so many memories that also you cannot um, reproduce a better. They will also tell you, no, my mother's is best, or my grandmother. But I heard all these stories, and I'm sure you in this country can have these memories linked to maybe uh, fondue or raclette. But now that I'm here, I, I don't have these memories. My, my childhood is linked to tacos, to fresh markets, to eating like long breakfast in Mexico. So this idea of bringing all these stories together to the table, it's, um, it sometimes is difficult. But with a multicultural um, team, it's, um, it's better uh, because we help each other to bring it uh, in an easier way. So um, visiting a restaurant is a human experience that brings together the pleasure of food. For the people we share, with the people we share the meal, the dining room, the staff, the china, the music, um, Plus one more, the expectation that I was already telling, um, being under the names of Gucci and Massimo Bottura, of course you link it to maybe a tortellini, maybe a fashion, also a lot of times of a very expensive um, luxury clothes, but we, we want to give you a different experience. We have a casual uh, menu that we put uh, all our stories connected with the best products of Italy. Um, and also we read all the times a lot of information, like now with all the social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, we are pushed to, to listen to a lot of information that it's just flashes. How many times we didn't see a dish on Instagram that looks bright, pretty, fresh, and we just connect with it and we can say, it's delicious, but we didn't even try it. So we, we are building our memory now in so many images that also we want to bring it to you, also with art, with music. Uh, so that is how we put together Gucci, fashion or art, and uh, the multicultural experience we want to give you. So what would you expect for, from a Mexican chef, woman? Because I've heard so many times when we started with this project, why she's not Italian? Why she's a woman? Why these brands chose a woman, not Italian, here? So I think I'm just lucky, first of all. And it's important also to say that behind all the kitchens from all around the world, uh, the beauty of forming all these groups is the diversity, not only in gender, but in race, so we make a balance of that. I think it's the most important thing, and we show it here. Um, by case in our team, um, we didn't choose it, of course, because you know in the industry it's sometimes hard to, to get people to work with you. Um, but by case, we are 50%, 50% women and men. And it was just uh, something that just happened. Um, but I know there is uh, hard for for all women to get in the industry, and I'm just um, want to tell everybody that we must point this thing and we must um, embrace this story that must be balanced in everything. So, if you ask me what is our job in Gucci. I will tell you we work every day to turn new experiences in valuable and long-lasting um, memories. Um, so I will go here. Do I have to be close to this? No. Okay. So about the expectation, we have, 
when you come to Guccesteria, and you're in Italy, of course, you think you will eat, uh, the first dish will be like maybe pasta, but I just decided to bring my story into a dish. So we, we decided to do a tostada, that it's um, a tortilla, can be fried or baked, um, into, with all the, product, all the Italian products, like we're using uh, the bonito. That it's a Mediterranean fish, that it's not uh, valued a lot in Italy. It's like a cheap fish, but it has like a very delicate, nice flavor. So we're working with it. Now, we just find that in Italy, they, they grow, like from a long, long time ago, um, corn. So we just find a place where they have like the yellow corn, the purple corn and the white corn, and we start making blends. The, when we started with this dish, we make um, a mixture with the white corn and the, um, and the jello because they were a little bit drier than in Mexico. So we were, uh, and the, the white one has a little bit more of water. Adding uh, the lard, we could uh, make the tortillas. So we're using the products from Italy to bring up this Mexican traditional dish. And then after searching for more um, producers, we just found that they have the purple corn there. So we just changed our tostada that we will, I will show you later how we make it. And then to bring away this expectation, we contact this uh, Japanese illustrator that is called Ryu Tomiyake to do these um, drawings. And after he bring it to us, I, I noticed that we were like very flat, very shiny. Um, he's a super good illustrator, but I can tell that he didn't taste the dish. So the memory that he has is only a photo. It doesn't have like a taste. Maybe if he could, he will uh, taste the dish. Will be maybe less brighter for sure, because you can see that the style is not that bright. So actually, next week he's coming to, to have the dishes. And I will, I will love like, to put like, on, on the social media how is the different uh, illustration of, about this? Because I'm sure it will be very, very different. Then we have uh, the Takaban, that we're using the Chinta Senese, that it's um, a race of pork uh, from Tuscany, to do a Japanese-Chinese bun. It is a tribute to my husband that he loved this. So we use Italian products to make this um, uh, easy sandwich. And there's the, there's the illustration of Ryuto, but I think it's like so similar. Maybe he will have this, this dish, will be like the sauce melting, or maybe less perfect than there. And we have the Charlie Marley. This is um, a dessert that we create in honor of Massimo, that he always came to the kitchen begging for chocolate. So we make these different levels of chocolate and hazelnut, but instead of after your months changing the dessert, it just evolved. Then it turns it, this is the, the illustration, and then it turns uh, in winter into this mug, and it became, um, a hot chocolate with all the toppings, and now that the weather is getting better, more sunny, uh, it turns it to an um, ice cream sandwich of hazelnut and, um, and chocolate. And now in our presentation, in our pop-up that we're doing now in Singapore, we just add the kaya. So we are, instead of the praline of the hazelnut, we add this kaya that Singaporeans used to have uh, in the breakfast and makes it more creamier. So we, we would like to, we are trying to bring all these traditions of everyone into our kitchen. Because I'm sure everybody in here 
must have a uh, um, family from other parts of the world, and you build these memories in through that. Uh, yesterday, I was um, talking with a new chef friend, and he told me that um, he has an uh, Indonesian family, and that he's now doing Indonesian food here, with the different touches he gets in, in Switzerland. And it's very interesting because this is also the philosophy I have, like why we don't, we don't bring this here? It's a new memory. If we think about pasta or pizza, it's a very young uh, dish because how about the tomatoes? They weren't there like all the time. The, um, when all these travels to America, they bring it. So the future of the food, it's all about evolution and how we mix everything. Um, I won't say never that the traditional things, we, we don't do it. Also, we have a very signature dish that it's the tortellini with Parmigiano cream. But it's maybe another um, memory of other person. So you can come to the restaurant and have the memory of your mother to have this amazing tortellini, but maybe have also a tostada as an entree um, to make it like fresher and, um, and maybe you can have like this bond of the two countries there. And finally, the, the bergamot that I'm really in love of the, all the citrus in southern Italy and this is one of our main desserts there. So we're going to start doing the tostada. I would like to, to show you the dough and if you can smell it. Because we all know in a lot of places we are, we, it's very easy now to find uh, already tortillas like packed and we have it like in nachos, wherever. But to make it from scratch, it's very interesting how we mix um, this corn that it's a little bit drier, but has um, a different flavor, but bringing back to the, to the tradition of Mexico. You can smell it if you want, someone else can smell it. It's very fresh corn because there's no, there's no sense to bring the corn from Mexico. I, I don't think that makes sense if we have it here. So we use this dough to make the tostada. And we obtain this, that also a funny story about the tostada is that usually in Mexico with everything on top and since you're a child you, you got you the ability or the technique to don't let uh, fall everything, right? But when I did the, the test with Massimo, with all the team, I saw that it was falling apart everything Everywhere uh, they were like uh, dirty, their clothes. And I just decided to put it upside down. So you have all the filling, like it, in this case will be the palamita, uh, in English bonito, and on top the sauces. So you can be like in a fancy place doing this and don't uh, mess yourself all. So Matias is cutting the palamita. We will we will mix it with salt, a little bit of shallot, lime juice,
olive oil. It's a very easy dish, but with very complex flavors because of the corn. We do um, an avocado cream, and when I arrived to Italy, I noticed that most of the Italians tell me, I don't like coriander, I don't like coriander. But I like ask, like, why? You're, maybe it's too strong, but also they use a lot of parsley, and for me, it's stronger. So I decided to put like a delicate note of uh, coriander. Instead of using the leaves, um, we just make an, um, coriander oil and we blend it with the, with the avocado. So most of the people that used to tell me I don't like coriander, they don't even notice that the coriander is there and they like it. So it was a nice try. We add the, the zest of lime. And then we do a mayonnaise of chipotle that is one of the most aromatic chilies we have in, in Mexico. And if, I don't know if you know, but I can tell you the story that chipotle, every, every chili in Mexico changed their name. Like from fresh, if, has, if it later has been smoked, it changed name. And if it has another process, again changed the name. So the chipotle is the jalapeño that has been um, smoked and then done in escabeche. And it gets really um, nice flavor of uh, the smoke and the acidity of the escabeche. So it really combines well with, uh, with this raw bonito. Possiamo mettere qui un po'. Thank you. So now Matteo is doing the tostada. We do have some, uh, also some circles of avocado here and some sprouts of coriander that most of the coriander haters never, never will tell that was coriander. It's just, um, what? I used, to, I used to hate parsley. Now I like it, but it's, it was like little by little. We cover the avocado because we just found a farm in Sicily that now are growing uh, avocados there. So also um, Italian product. And we cover this avocado with coriander oil, so it doesn't, it makes like a, um, a crust, so it doesn't get oxidized. Oxidized, I think it's the word. Then we cover all this tostada with some bright colors to bring out the colors of my country. So we use the hibiscus powder hibiscus, or also you can call it carcade. And so. And now you can see it's very, very simple dish, but all the job is behind the, to do the, the tostada to find the producer, to make the nixtamalization, I think. I don't think if the word has like a translation, but you know, to bring this dough, you have to cook the, um, the corn with um, calcium. Then the crust of the, or the skin of the corn 
will pop out and will it make it softer. Then you grind it and you obtain the dough. But all this process to get it, it was kind of a super hard work. And to bring also the, the thickness, the right thickness to, to have this tostada. So maybe we're using like cheap products of Italy, but we have like the, the luxury thing that we have searched for them and now we can bring it to you in a very easy, casual way. So here is the tostada. And it's one of the of our main dishes for the tasting menu now. Uh, how many people working in the kitchen? We are 12, but we, we are closed uh, all day. We are open every day. So every day we are like six or it depends. Seven, eight. Yeah, if we have a special event, we, every, everyone is there. And what about the booking? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, we're not uh, Francescana, of course, and we have more seats and more tables. So yes, you maybe one day after, uh, one day before, mm -hmm. you can do the reservation, but also you can walk in sometimes. Mm -hmm. so. And when Massimo shows up, not only to pick some chocolate in the kitchen, like he always do, <laughs> and he always does, um, is everybody hustling around and, and being nervous? No, you know, I, when he's around, I'm very happy because um, he says he's a boss that brings us calm. And I, it's the first time I've seen that. He has this big energy that uh, brings up everyone. So, because usually the chef just came and you're like, oh my God, I'm, everything must be super clean and I'm just freaking out. And, but no, he just gave you the, the trust so you feel confident. And this is a very interesting um, learning from him okay. because I'm trying also to give that to my team to uh, trust them so okay. they can feel the, the responsibility in a nice way. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let, let us talk a little about, about, about what you're aiming to. I mean, you come from the best uh, kitchens all over the world. You've been working with uh, Virgilio Martinez yeah. in, uh, in Lima, a wonderful and great chef. Um, now you end up in, uh, in Florence with uh, Massimo Bottura to start this huge project with Gucci. Um, where shall this end up? What is your dream? I don't know. Uh, I don't know where it should end up. Now um, my commitment and my desire is to build a strong team and that there is harmony there. That mm -hmm. I think it's the most challenging thing that a chef uh, lives every day, like the, the harmony in all the team. I think it's the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what we were talking about right, right before the show with, uh, with Thomas Dorfer, that this kind of thing is, is, is very, very important. And we've seen it today with Sir and Celine and with uh, Philip Raching as well, that yeah. teamwork and the, the, the relation in the team between the team uh, members is part of the most important uh, success of the kitchen. Yeah, definitely. If you have like a happy team, you can do everything. Mm. That's for sure. And uh, that's what we try every day. Mm. It's, um, we are 24 hours together, almost. And we are, we meet each other in our, in extreme situations mm. because uh, it's a lot of stress, uh, you never have time for a lot of things, so you know the worst and the better of each person in a very short time. So you are enclosed in a kitchen that you have all this and you must contain the people mm -hmm. to to have a nice day there. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, the, the CEO of Gucci and Massimo Bottura are mm -hmm. best friends for... Yeah, Marco for and Massimo. Yeah. Yes. And uh, don't, don't you have the aim that they told you, come on, Karim, take this restaurant, do the best, and uh, we need in uh, three years two stars? 
No, it wasn't like that. Actually, our, we have never spoke about the stars or the list or something like that because we are focused now, first of all, when we started to open. Mm -hmm. So you cannot think in anything more than opening that have everything, right? Um, now, after the months, uh, we, then we focus more on the team. Mm -hmm. And now we focus more on, on bringing up more ideas. Mm -hmm. But for sure, if someday it came, will be like um, a nice present for the team because I think nobody in the gastronomy world uh, doesn't work. We work very hard in this industry, so mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be a very nice reward. But if we don't, we also know what we are doing, and we are very happy with that. So, and they never push me through that. You're, never. you're origin from, from Mexico. Yes. And Mexico, as, as I know it, I've been several times over there, um, it's really a, a macho area. Yes, yes, but you come to Italy, in the kitchen. It's the worst macho area in Europe. So, yeah. is this perhaps the reason why you came up from such a country as a woman that are you so successful? Actually, in a macho area as a kitchen? I, I, don't, I don't think it's very linked, but in Mexico it's a very interesting thing that um, I've seen in a lot of places that there's mostly uh, men in the industry, but in Mexico it's a little bit different because most of the kitchens there and most of the traditional uh, things are made uh, now by women. Okay. So the respect and the opportunity we have in Mexico, it's different than from other parts of the world. It's a very um, punctual scenario there. Okay. It's very different. Um, I don't know if... Uh, Maybe Maria, that she's an expert on that, she can she can she, tell. She keeps an eye on, on you sure, for many many years now. I'm sure that uh, she knows this um, particular thing that is happening in Mexico. Okay. We have um, more opportunity as a woman in Mexico. Beside that, we have, of course, a Latin uh, culture of this macho thing. But I don't. I'm, I don't want to be drastic because mm -hmm. that's not the point. The point is like we need each other. Yeah. It's that's that the like thing. like you said on the beginning. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not like oh yeah because I want like I can do more or I can no, I can do different things and you can help me to to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a synergy between everybody. Um, but now that you're talking about Italy. Yeah, I can see a difference in Italy. Um, it's harder there. Mm. Yeah, you said that everybody was, was, was asking, why, yeah. why a woman yeah. <laughs> why not why from Italy? Why a woman and why not, from, why not from Italy? I can understand. But why a woman? It was like, my answer will be always like, why not? Yeah, why not? And of, of course, I know why. Uh, because Massimo saw what you were all about. I mean, that's, that's the whole story. Yeah, and I also um, tell all the people, I'm not like um, giving the voice to all the women like in the Congress or whatever. I'm giving the voice to everybody to have this balance. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. not just in gender, because I think nowadays we fo really focus on gender. But it's not a thing just of gender. It's mm -hmm. also a thing about race, um, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So if we just have this view of the, um, the beauty of, of diversity, uh, I'm sure we have a better place to work, a different, a different world. Remembers me of a certain person called Massimo. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. Much the same thing, isn't and it? And also, it's nice that um, important chefs do use their uh, famous names mm -hmm. 
to give opportunities to all of us. Yeah. I think it's very important. Okay. Maria, where will she end up? In the Olympic of gastronomy? Well, you. Huh? you know her for so long now. You think? I think as well. Ich glaube schon. Wo wird sie enden? So, wir haben hier ein paar Samples von diesen Sandwiches. Yes, are they ready? I, yeah. Now, so we, now they are ready. So we would like to invite you to get some sandwiches. Uh, we go into the, into the public in the audience, or shall they come Yeah, up? we can bring them, sure. Yeah, huh? better we do like this. We don't, we don't have so many, but also you can share. Ich gehe nach hinten nach. Nimm nur weg. Nimm ein bisschen weg da. So, da vielleicht noch was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nein, nein, ich gehe nach hinten. Die gehen in die Mitte, ich gehe nach hinten durch. So, dass wir alle, alle kriegen es nicht, aber ein paar können wir verteilen. Ne? Diese Sandwiches, die ein bisschen gebockt haben, ne? würde ich mal so sagen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the share. Our preparation is everything, haben wir gelernt. Huh? Hier haben wir noch ein paar. Maybe you can, okay. So. <laughs> Erstes Mal, dass ihr Gucci esst, huh? <laughs> Habt ihr noch nie gehabt? Danke. 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 Sì. Unsere Technik, magst du auch eins? <lacht> Dankeschön. Gut to wait or not? Was denkt ihr? We were yesterday talking so much about dessert with uh, Rune Frank. Yeah. Uh, because he has restaurant Coda in, in Berlin with only desserts. So this is one of the highlights of uh, this uh, year's Chef Alps, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Karim. Thank, thank you. you very much to your team. Thank you. Good luck in the Gucci in Florence. Thank you. I expect you all there. Uh, we w it will be nice to have you there. I'm there in three hours, so no problem at all. I'll, I'll show up. We're I'll not show far. Up. We're not far. <laughs> I'll show up. Ein herzliches Dankeschön und Applaus für das Team von uh, Karim Lopez.